Hey everybody, it's Sean from Japanese in a Year. In this video, I want to show you a couple of slight modifications I've made to Gabriel Weiner's Japanese model deck, which I've been using to learn Japanese. If we open up this card model, we'll see that these Japanese cards look like this, which is this gigantic monster thing, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. And for the most part, I've really been loving using this thing. It's an awesome tool. But I came across a couple of very slight problems that led me to make a couple of changes. And these changes actually have nothing to do with the card model itself, but rather with how they interact with some of the plugins I'm using with Anki. So let me show you an example. We go to make a new flashcard, and I put a kanji character in here say Nico for cat, which is the example I'm using on all of these videos apparently. Um, I'm going to get all of this extra stuff filled in automatically from my plugins. So I have uh, hiragana pronunciation, um, pronunciation with uh, pitch accent, and stroke order. So the first issue is with this pitch accent plugin. If you set this up exactly as Gabe describes in his setup video, it's going to put the pitch accent info in the recording field. So normally you would have a recording here, um, like this. Neko. So uh, you have your MP3 and the pitch accent in the same field, and normally this isn't a problem. However, if you were testing yourself on the kana spelling, which I was doing for the first 50 words or so that I learned in Japanese, then you're going to get a slight problem. So I filled in the rest of this info to make an example flashcard, and now I'm going to show you the issue that I was coming across, which is that if you're testing yourself on kana spelling, then if you go to the kana spelling cards here, Neko. what you should see is it says what's the kana spelling then you get the recording and then my job is to spit out the um, the kana spelling for this missing character now unfortunately our pitch accent um, kana is already here because it's in the same field as this recording and this kind of defeats the whole purpose of this um, kana card because my job is to see a blank space and then remember how to spit out the right kana. And in this case it's katakana which is technically not the right um, kana alphabet but it doesn't matter. The point is I want to just see the picture, the recording, and the sentence with the blank and be able to produce the kana without any extra help. So I don't want to see this. So what I ended up doing is creating a new field specifically for this pitch accent um, info. So what you do to do that is go into fields and then we want to create a new one. And let's call it pronunciation pitch accent. Okay and then it's going to stick it at the bottom here and we want to reorder this um, to the correct position under the rest of the pronunciation stuff. So the way that Anki does this is you click this reposition thing and then I want it in position number seven because I already counted it and figured that out. So now we have our new field. We have um, pronunciation kana, pronunciation pitch accent, and pronunciation recording. So if we were to type this character again it should stick that in the right place, except that it doesn't. And you'll notice that it still sticks it in the pronunciation recording field. And that's because that's where we told it to put it. So we have to go and change this in the settings. And before we change that, there's also one other thing that I'd like to be different about this um, pitch accent plugin. And that is that right now it's spitting out the kana in katakana. Um, which is is useful, but technically not the correct kana alphabet. I'd rather be seeing hiragana 
for this and for most of the other words that I'm learning. So I want to change both of these things at the same time. And the way that we do this is we go to this main Anki window, click on Tools, Add-ons, NHK Pronunciation, which is the plugin, and click Edit. And then we have to do a little bit of simple coding here. So uh, early on here, we'll see the source and destination fields. And we want to change this destination field from pronunciation recording to pronunciation pitch accent. So this just has to match the name of the field that we gave it. So now that should go in the right place. And then second of all, we want to go here and where it says use hiragana instead of katagana for readings. And it says false. And I don't know why this is the default, but it is. So we want to change it to true. That should give us hiragana. Now it's going to ask us to restart Anki, which I'm going to do. Now I've closed Anki and relaunched it. And now if I go to test out my plugin, this should all be working correctly. So I put my character here. And now I get the pitch accent in the pitch accent field in hiragana, which is everything that I could ever want. Now we have to do one last thing for this pitch accent to show up on our flashcards. And the goal is that basically anytime this kana pronunciation shows up on the back of a flashcard, we also want this um, pitch accent to show up right below it. And actually, we pretty much want this on the back of all the flashcards, but none of the fronts. So we go here to cards. The first instance of this we want to change is on card number three. And if we go to this back template square, scroll down, we'll see this piece of code here, these two lines, is to display the pronunciation for kana. And we want to just copy this, stick another one right below it, and then change the name so that it matches our new fields. So pronunciation, pitch, accent. And then what we really want to do from here on out is copy these two lines that we just added. So we're going to stick this on the back of a bunch of flashcards. This one's done. Let's go to the next. Go to the back here and just stick it in this space. Go to the next flashcard. Uh, stick it here in the back. You can stick it under the recording. Go to the next one. Do the same thing. In this case, I want to stick it after the extra info. And then when we get here, we can actually stop. Um, when we get to these kanji flashcards, starting with the signatures, we don't really need to have the pitch accent on those. But you can if you want. But I'm going to call that good. And that means that this thing should be working correctly. Now, the second and last issue, this is a very small one, but after a while it started to annoy me. And that is that any time that you modify what's in this first field, it's going to reset what happens in this stroke order field down here. So it's more obvious if you do a multi-kanji word. So let's try Nihongo for Japanese. That was not it at all, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. So we have three kanji here. And so it gave us these three stroke diagrams. And normally what I would do is move these around. So I'm going to stick one in stroke order um, diagram two and one in stroke order diagram number three. And this is all good for now. The problem is that anytime you click in this field, accidentally or not, it's going to reset this first stroke order diagram field. And now I have all of these again, which I don't want. And normally this is not a problem, except that I found that sometimes I need to edit flashcards on the fly while I'm studying. Like maybe I notice a mistake or I want to add something. And so I click edit and it opens the the edit uh, window and then automatically 
my cursor is left in this first field. And so that just ruins everything down here. And um, so I would have to delete these stroke order diagrams, which is a little thing, but when you keep doing it over and over and over, it just gets annoying. So there's a very simple fix for this, and that is to put any other field in the first position, because then your cursor will automatically land in that field and it will not um, affect what's happening down here in the stroke order diagram. So in my case, what I did is go to fields and I just stuck the picture as the first thing. So I'm gonna click reposition as number one. And so now if we've done everything correctly, this thing should be working perfectly well. And that's it. Those are the changes that I've made to this model deck, which again are very minor things and probably won't bother most people. But uh, maybe some of you will find that useful and I hope that helps. So thanks for watching and see you next time.